Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today I'm going to show you how to control and work with post processing in URP. Whether you want to be able to swap post processing profiles, to be able to disable post processing altogether, or to be able to affect specific parameters of the actual post processing, like in the example, to change the bloom and the intensity with one click of a button. So do be sure to come and check out my Patreon to get access to over 190 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. And do be sure to check out all the links in the description for all the best sales, savings and everything you can find in game dev. Okay, so I wanted to start out showing that in URP how to get the post processing to work properly and sometimes the issues that you face when you're trying to add this to your camera. So in URP, it may already have its own volume, but if it doesn't, you can create an empty game object. I've just renamed this to post process, and I'm just gonna add a component called a volume. And volume can be set to global, unless you're specific to an area, have the weight to one priority, and you can create a new profile by clicking new. I've already got some sample profiles, so this is my normal profile, and if you do click one, it will add it to your project panel, and then you can start adding effects and you can add effects by clicking add override, post processing and choose the effects that you want. And you can drop down any of the effects and make sure you tick which of the ones you want to be relevant to you. Now, sometimes that might not be visible on your main camera. You can actually select your main camera and make sure that post processing on the rendering is ticked. And one other thing to mention, if you scroll down to environment and you go to volumes, you may have a problem that the volume mask might be on a different layer to what your post process is. So say you had a custom layer up here in post process, custom layer of post process here, my camera is not finding it. Now, if I went back to my main camera, as long as we have the volume mask as the same layer as what we had to the post process, it will actually make it visible. So we're going to create a new script in C Sharp and just call this post process controls. I'm going to add that script to my post process volume area and I'm going to open up in Visual Studio. Now, first of all, what we want to do is actually find the profile that we want to create. So I'm going to have serialized field private and then set this as volume. Now, as you can see, volume can't be selected because it doesn't work. Now, if we go to the top, we need to use a specific namespace using a unity engine dot rendering, and then we can select the volume that we need and we can just call this our post processing volume. So we can keep this nice and straightforward. We did want to be able to disable and enable our effects. So I'm just going to create a quick Boolean to be able to disable any post processing if we need to. And then in my next section, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference volume profiles. So I'm going to have a main profile and a secondary profile, what we're going to switch to. So then what I'm going to have is two public methods, which I'm going to just change these on button presses to make it easier in the example. So the main button will be to change the main post process and then the second one to the secondary. So to be able to do that, we want to have the post processing volume dot profile is then equal to whichever profile that we want it to be equal to. So we'll say post profile main, and that will be able to set it to that profile if we press that button. And this one, we can set it to the secondary. So we can test that out. Now we need to make sure that we add the volume that we're going to use. So we can just add itself. You could have found this in start, but I'm just going to add the volume itself. And then I will find the normal profile or the main one and then the secondary one, which is just whichever one, this one that I've just chosen. Now I'm going to quickly add these to my button presses. So now you can see my button is referencing that method, which is the main post process. Now, as we're playing the game, you can see that I've got the original profile, which I can click and the secondary profile, which changes it to each other. So let's say I click secondary, go to the post process. You can see that it's sample. I can click back on the original and then it changes and we'll swap our entire profile around. Now I'll give you an example of disabling and I've just made a new method called disable post process. I'm just going to set disable equal to the opposite of whatever disabled is at the time. So in our case, we just want to say post processing volume dot enabled equals false or maybe whatever equals disable in my case. So you can set it equal to true or false. You can also turn the entire game object off by using dot set active, which would do the same thing. But in this case, we're just going to disable the volume. And then I'll make sure that my disable is 
true on the boolean and I'll just connect it up to my button on my post process. Now I can just select my button to disable and you can see that the volume is now off. And if I click my button again, we can swap it around. And now the last thing that you might want to know is how to specifically adjust very particular parameters or post processing effects. So I've just created a new header and we're going to reference whichever effect that we want. So in my case, my example is going to be bloom. It doesn't like bloom at the moment. I'm just going to give it a name of underscore bloom just so that we don't have a really similar name. Now we need to go back to the top again and have another namespace called using unity engine dot rendering dot universal because this is the universal render pipeline in this case and then now bloom is actually found so i can create a brand new method called adjust bloom underscore bloom dot intensity dot value equals whatever we want our value to be it could be 10. now this won't work because we actually need to initialize this variable so at the top we can just have a start method and we need to actually find this effect to be able to use it. So how do we do that? We need to say post processing volume dot profile dot try get and then in brackets we'll say out underscore bloom and then put a semicolon. And in this case, it will find the post processing profile and get the actual effect that we want. Then we'll be able to set whatever bloom is. Now, you might not know what type of parameters each of the post-processing effects have, whether it's bloom, vignette, chromatic aberration, or whatever. Now, if you hold control and click on intensity, it will take you to the class for bloom. So you can see it has threshold, intensity, scatter, clamp, tint, and these. And these are all things that you can adjust. And you can see that if it's a float parameter, you can adjust that. All these are floats. This one's a color parameter. This one's a true or false or a boolean parameter, an integer parameter, a texture parameter. So with that now connected to my button, I can press my bloom. And you can see that now if I go to the bloom post processing, it actually changed my intensity to 10. And it looks like a beautiful summer's day. So this is just a quick rundown of everything that you need. And I'll put this script on my Patreon to get hold of it. So you can have an easy way to reference exactly what you need to do in URP. Do check out all the links in the description for the best sales, savings, and everything you can find in game dev. Do be sure to check out all my great assets on the Unity Asset Store and on my website for massive savings. Big thank you to all my patrons and a massive thank you to Peter Steiner. Thank you to everybody who supports the channel and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.